Okay, so in this problem, you're told that there's a grounded conductive metal sheet uh, at the z equals zero plane. There is a point charge of charge plus q at the point zero zero a, and there's also a point charge of charge negative q at the point a zero a. So you're asked to find what is the force on this negative q point charge. Um, due to the plus q point charge. So um, we need to use the method of images here to make our lives easier. So let's talk about um, how you would use that here. Uh, so when you first draw your diagram in your standard Cartesian coordinates, uh, you'd have your x, y, and z axes pointing in these directions. Um, you're told that you have a charge of charge plus q here at 0, 0, a. So that's x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals a. That's 0, 0, a. Okay, that looks good. And you want to find the force on this charge here due to the plus q charge. Uh, this negative q charge is at the point x equals a, y equals 0, and z equals a. That's a, 0, a. So um, you'll notice that... Uh, for the plus q and minus q point charge, they both have a y value of 0. So we can kind of ignore the y-axis for now and flatten the image into 2D, which is how I get from here to here. So now I just have the z-axis pointing up here, and that's on the x-axis. Uh, here, this blue parallelogram thing was supposed to be the z equals 0 plane. That's the grounded conductive metal sheet drawn again here again at the z equals zero plane we have this blue the same exact same blue grounded conductive metal sheet here which is going to be important in a second and uh, we have the same point here plus q at distance a away and the same uh, charge here negative q uh, at the point still a zero a so this is exactly the same as this okay so these two are equivalent diagrams okay so I just drew it like this to make it easier to visualize the next part which is where we apply the method of images so the method of images says and I'll bring up this picture here from the course slides because it'll say it better than I ever can it says that um, well you can read it yourself uh, you can pause it here if you'd like but uh, the main thing to take away is if you've got a grounded metal slab um, uh, at the bottom of the charge, di charge distributions that you care about, you can basically replace this grounded metal slab with um, nothing uh, where the potential is zero and you mirror, you effectively mirror the charge distributions about where the grounded metal plane was. So you'll see uh, this row L, the cylinder thing, it got mirrored perfectly around this line here where the conductor used to be. Okay, so that's exactly what we're doing in this problem. Um, except instead of dealing with big lines and volumes of charge, we're just dealing with point charges just so we can get the concept down. So um, this plus Q1 is the exact same plus Q that we've been dealing with before. Uh, this negative Q is the point charge who we're trying to find the forces on. And these new point charges are, are, are the images, the image charges. Uh, we're using these to help with solving the problem, basically. Uh, they don't really exist in the real situation. We're adding these in thanks to the method of images. So again, um, the conducting plane was at z equals zero and we removed it here the blue pl plane here is gone and we mirrored um we mirrored both these charges onto the other side of the x-axis and it's also really important to note that we uh reversed the sign of the charges as well uh we kept the magnitude same but we reversed it i'm not sure if that uh yeah 
it shows right here in the diagram that uh, the charge rho L becomes negative rho L, rho V becomes negative rho V, so yeah. So using method of images, you have to mirror the charge distributions, whether it's a point charge or a volume charge or whatever. Um, you mirror it about the conducting plane, which in this case was right here. And you flip the signs of the charges and you keep the magnitudes the same. So um, then naturally this, uh, this point must be located at um, 0, 0, negative A which is the opposite of zero, zero, positive A. And this charge must be at um, A, zero, negative A, which is uh, this thing flipped around the x-axis to here. So once you've got that going, uh, the rest of the question is not so bad um, once you set it up properly. So again, our goal is to find the forces on this thing, on this charge here in the upper right. So. Um, there is a force uh, that there's a force on Q here due to Q1 that pulls towards Q1 because they're opposite charges. Um, there is a force from Q2 onto Q here that pushes negative Q away because negative Q and negative Q2 they're both uh, negative and um, by the same idea you've got um, Q3 pulling negative Q here. So we have these four forces here. We have these four, I mean, <laughs> sorry, these, we have these three forces here acting on negative Q. And we want to find uh, the sum of these forces to see what the total force is on this thing. And that's, uh, that's how you use the method of images. So, um, like, uh, just like how I've been doing since the start, um, we're going to be using uh, that standard method where you've got to find, um, you know, R, uh, R prime. I'll get to it in a second. So this is the formula we're going to be plopping it into. You might not have seen it for a while. I don't, I haven't seen it for a while. Um, okay. So, um, the point we care about is Q here, so I'm going to let uh, R here correspond to that. So the position vector of this is going to be A in the AX direction plus A in the AZ direction. All right, so this is the position vector of Q, the thing we care about. Um, I'll have a position vector R1 for Q1, R2 for Q2, and R3 for Q3. So R1 is equal to A, A, Z. R2 is equal to negative A, A, Z. R3 is equal to A, A, X minus a a z so <laughs> sorry for the confusing naming of the constant here um but the a in front of the unit vectors means the distance okay so so from here you can find um r minus r1 is equal to a a x R minus R2 is equal to uh, AAX plus 2A, AZ, and R minus R3 is equal to 2A, AZ. Um, their magnitudes, um, I'm going to call this just one just so I can write these equations faster one two and three so the magnitude of one is root a squared magnitude of two is do 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 do, do this thing do 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 and the magnitude of three is four a squared like that so once you've got these quantities um you can really just plug it into into this formula we've been 
talking about. Yeah, so once you've got all these uh, quantities worked out, um, you can really just plug it into the, the formula here. Um, so once you do that, it's going to look like um, you have negative Q times Q. Uh, this was Q1 and Q2 in the formula here, Q1 and Q2. Um, that dealt with the Q1 and Q the Q1 in this formula was negative Q, the charge we care about, and Q2 was positive Q1 here, uh, which is where the force comes from. So that's why you have negative Q times Q. Right. This is negative Q, the charge we care about, and then the tr the magnitude of Q1. And then you would plug in R minus R1. Three days later. Yeah, so once you plug everything in, um, the total force on the negative Q that we cared about so much to go through all this stuff um, well, you can find it by summing these terms. Um, and don't forget the units. This is force, so we're dealing with newtons. Okay. And I don't believe the problem specifies, but uh, if the problem explicitly says you're dealing in free space, then you can let this epsilon everywhere be epsilon naught. Otherwise, um, you'll have to deal with that epsilon naught as well. That's it. Stop watching.